listening into Soul Food, Food for the Soul, brought to you each and every Wednesday. Right here on 1540 AM, Power 104.5 FM, the national voice of the Bahamas, courtesy of St. James Native Baptist Church. The time is 6.54 AM. Wake up every This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation, 
founded on spiritual values, and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited, or their lives frustrated by deprivation, and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's Wednesday, April 6, 2022, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, another busy night on the streets of the capital for police. A deal is in sight for the Grand Lucayan Resort. We'll tell you why school gardens are an important tool to learning. And we have the results of the Styles versus St. Clair cook-off. So let's start the morning off right. is brought to you by We Buy You Sell Company, your leading hurricane impact windows, doors, and tile specialist. Don't tell me the sky is the limit when the footprints are on the moon. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. Good morning, everybody. I'm a rejuvenated Charles Fisher. Uh -huh. I'm so ready for this show today, LaDawn. What's yes. up? I'm, I'm ready as well. Yesterday. We had a good cook-off. Cook cook cook-off awesome. yesterday. Awesome. Viewers, you don't yes. want to miss the oh, results. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little lucky this morning for meeting all that ah, soup. It was so good. Mm. It was good. Sinclair, Styles, Bell Phillip. Yeah, I think the I can't say who who won, but it was it was really really good. Also, this so. morning, two schools now getting into gardening. Mm -hmm. We see our youngsters now getting right, into gardening, right. trying to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. We have that. We also have a town hall meeting that's coming up. We're going to give you some information. That's tomorrow. We're yeah. going to give you some tomorrow. information on that. So mm -hmm. this is a very educational show for, yeah. in store for you guys this morning. So stay tuned to that. But to get things started off, we take it out to the streets where our Anthony Smith is standing by with Corporal Kemp. Good morning. <laughs> On and good morning, Bahamas. Your first look at morning traffic comes to you live from Wolf Road and Lincoln Boulevard. A steady stream of traffic already flowing through this area. I call it some light to moderate traffic. Perfect conditions for those who are looking to make their morning commute at this hour. But joining us this morning, as always, is Corporal Patrick Kemp of the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, Anthony, and good morning, Bahamas. Now, Kemp, we, we talked a little about offenses. We talked a little bit about excuses. But I'm trying to be a better driver every day, so I need you to tell me a little bit more about the do's and don'ts of driving. Well, especially for someone like yourself that, that comes up with a lot of excuses, right? One of the things you'd want to do, you got practice wearing your seatbelt, all right? Obviously, it does save lives. It's just not a cliche. You practice wearing your seatbelt. You'll also want to, when you're approaching the traffic light, do not go through that amber light. If it's, an, if it's not necessary, if you don't reach that stop line, you stay at the traffic light. And, and, and um, you want to be courteous to the other drivers on the street. And for you adults that love to drive with these children in the front seat, it's a good practice. You want to put that child in the back seat, in the proper child protector seat. Uh, some of these things that would help you to become a much better driver. All right. Well, I guess we're running out of time in this segment. We are going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Thanks a lot. We are waking up to a cool 77 degrees, partly cloudy, winds south at 14 miles per hour, humidity 88%. A high pressure ridge will continue to produce mostly breezy and stable conditions across the country today. Fall areas, weather mostly sunny, breezy and very warm, fair and mild tonight. Your daytime high temperature 88 degrees Fahrenheit, overnight low of 74. And as we look ahead to Thursday and Friday, winds subsiding and humid on Thursday. 87 in the day, 74 at night. And then on Friday, expect a thunderstorm in the early morning in spotty areas. 86 in the day, 71 at night. Police in the Capitol called to the scene of multiple homicides last evening. Press liaison officer Superintendent Audley Peters fills us in. Shortly before 12 a.m., police were alerted to the sounds of gunshot on Sutton Street off Camp Road. Officers were dispatched, and on the arrival of the first responders, they met a male lying just outside his front door. 
suffering from gunshot wounds. The emergency medical services visited the scene and later pronounced the male lifeless. Our investigators are canvassing the area at this time, seeking to put the pieces together as the details are somewhat sketchy. And that's what we have for you in respect to this incident. Earlier in the night, we also had another incident that occurred on Cynthia Motherprak Park, located 2nd Street and Ponciana Avenue. The particulars there are, is that a male was seated watching a basketball game when a lone gunman walked up to him and discharged the weapon, fatally wounding him. Government expects to have an inclusive contract for the purchase of the Grand Lucayan Resort by the end of April. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, the Honorable Chester Cooper, confirms that the government has three substantial offers. I've always said that it will be a combination of the size of the check, the vision for the resort, and a shared vision for Grand Bahama. So we're seeking to find the right partner. We want to get this right. We're being very deliberate. We're learning from the mistakes of the previous administration with the last deal that was on the table. But the emergence of the new XE subvariant found in the United Kingdom, which the World Health Organization says may be transmissible than previous strains, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. the Honorable Michael Darvel assures local health officials remain on alert. He insists it's hard to zero in on the level of funds needed to continually combat the virus, but he says the cost will be covered. There is sufficient funds that is available to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And uh, the Davis-led administration, if there's shortfalls, uh, I have the capability to go to Cabinet to meet those shortfalls. Because we all know, without having COVID under control, it's very difficult to get the economy moving. A global spike in oil prices leaving motorists pinching pennies even more in order to fill up at the pumps. Fidelity Bank CEO Gowan Bo says while sanctions due to Russia's unrelenting war with Ukraine interrupted a sizable percentage of the world's oil supply, the demand for oil has virtually stayed the same. People don't want to drive less. People don't need less heat in the cold winter. So when a supplier of that is actually pulled out of the equation, people with the same demand with less supply and bidding the price up. If you produce certain items, you could control the cost of it. So the United States, where they were able to keep their domestic reserves for price balance and import from other territories, now that the imports are more expensive and less available, they can turn to their domestic reserves. We don't have that luxury. We import all of the oil that we consume. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senator the Honorable Ryan Pinder maintains steps are being taken to pay outstanding legal judgments against the government in an effort to ensure the timely delivery of justice to litigants. He believes the move is necessary as there are successful litigants who have been waiting for years to be paid money they're legally entitled to. All of the $17.7 million of judgments are accrued judgments on the books from before September 16th, 2021, yeah. Yeah. that are being satisfied. So I'm going way back multiple, gener multiple administrations. This doesn't even have to do with property acquisitions that have accrued decades and decades and decades, and now interest and costs are higher than what the acquisition value would have been back then. And you take people's land, and you say, it's my land now, I'm the government for the public interest, and you don't pay them, mm -hmm. and you wait 10 years to let them draw it through the courts just to reach an evaluation. It's a ludicrous, ludicrous practice. with today's lesson. Bobby, can you tell me the national bird of the Bahamas? Miss J, we can't hear Bobby because he's fooling around with the other guys. <laughs> All right now, y'all settle down. That's okay, Bobby. I'll have a talk with your mom. It's time to transform the way you learn. Transform the way you learn and improve your in-home Wi-Fi coverage with Eero.
will take place on Thursday to address the continued fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. World-renowned internist, cardiologist, and epidemiologist Dr. Peter McCullough is in town for the forum, and he joins us live in studio this morning. Good morning, Dr. McCullough, and welcome to the Morning Edition. Good morning. So tell us a little bit more about this town hall meeting uh, set to take place tomorrow. You know, I've been treating COVID-19 for over two years, helping patients avoid hospitalization and death. And I've had the privilege of testifying in the U.S. Senate twice, multiple state senates. And I plan to bring a message to the people of the Bahamas that COVID-19 in high-risk individuals is treatable early at home. And also, we'll do a careful review of vaccine safety and efficacy. Is this the first time a forum of, of this kind is being, I guess, taking place in the Bahamas? It is, and we've actually had a big impact with some radio spots and good conversations with doctors across the island this week. And what, can we expect to see you back, uh, I guess, for a forum like this? And what can Bahamas expect? I think they can expect more and more worldwide collaboration. We haven't seen enough. COVID-19 is a worldwide problem. You've heard about now the XE, XF, and SXD variants, which are within the Omicron subclass. We're making huge progress in COVID-19, and we plan to bring a message of hope. And speaking of that message of hope, talk to us a little bit more about the presenters uh, expected at this forum. Well, we have Dr. Um, uh, Dinothra uh, Archer Cartwright, who really is a leader in the COVID-19 pandemic response. She's been working with us for a long, long time on the worldwide stage. And then the Optimist Group, which is a group of doctors, lawyers, and other interested citizens to help Bahamians get through the pandemic and get completely restored to normal. And just before we go, I want to ask you, the world has been dealing with COVID for more than two years now. In your opinion, is there any end in sight? And if not, how do we continue to navigate our way through this pandemic? In my view, the emergency phase of the pandemic is over, meaning uh, we're, we have uh, adequate hospital capacity and resources to manage. There will be residual cases, but as a greater and greater proportion of the population have had COVID-19, they have a degree of immunity and subsequent infections are progressively more mild. It's very similar to the common cold. So we will work our way out of it through an endemic nature now of the viral infection. I just want to uh, tell our viewers that the town hall meeting will start at 7 p.m. on Thursday at the Church of God Auditorium on Joe Farrington Road. Now, you can also join in person or online through YouTube, Facebook, or Zoom. Dr. Peter McCullough, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition, and good luck on Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank you. The voice for the homeless, Bishop Walter Hanschel, is well on his way to a full recovery. This powerful man of God recently shared with us his battle with stomach and kidney cancer. But thank God for, but he thanks God rather for allowing him to still be able to fulfill his purpose. In his absence due to treatments abroad, Bishop Hanschel says Great Commission Ministries is still operable and is meeting high social demands, which he says has increased over the past few months. We have a board of directors um, that, is, that are helping out. We have uh, a full staff. Our full, slate, our full staff is still on the, on, on the ground working every day. Great Commission is doing all the things that we used to do. We're still feeding the hungry. We're still providing um, shelter for homeless people, in particular women and their children who find themselves without a bed. We are still providing um, shelter for them. Um, we are still reaching out to the, to the at-risk youth. Um, we are still doing what we've been called to do. Bishop Hanschel says his ministry was able to find shelter for the late Carissa Culmer, who allegedly died by suicide last month. Additionally, he says in light of this, plans are now in the pipeline to construct a multi-million dollar shelter for Bahamians and their families who desperately need it. A three million dollar, 100 bed, state of the art, homeless shelter on Carmichael Road. The plants, um, we had it for 70 beds and the Lord told me to, to, to go bigger. And we, we, we revised the plants to 100 beds. And that, that, would, that would take, that would be, be, be a, be, make a big dent in homelessness in, in Nassau because we're gonna be able to help um, more mothers, more men, more husbands, more fathers who are struggling, who, find, who, are, who are evicted or, um, or they have no job and they cannot afford to pay rent.
we head to the break, we take a look back at the day in Bahamian history. On April 6, 1960, there was a shortage of bread in New Providence as the fire destroyed the colonial bakery on Bilney Lane. Also on this day in 2002, the Bahamas captured the Carifta boxing title in Martinique, winning nine gold, four silver, and five bronze medals. Persons are now getting into home gardening to feed themselves. That's a trend now seems to be falling into schools as CHU's agriculture science teacher Swayvon Smith has found the green thumb. Well, we, we have tomatoes growing, pak choy, otherwise called Chinese cabbage. We have original cabbage, we have peppers, we have lettuce, and we have okra. And with the schools just opening and students back to school full time, how were they able to get the greens up and sprouting? We came back here on the 26th of January, so we did about that first week. We sowed the seeds that first week and planted along the way. This farm here now is a little bit of container farming because we lack soil, so we put the soil in the tiles to encourage them how to do it even at home to, to learn a few skills. The kids are, they are excited. To them, this is very strange. Right? Because they don't know the plant, so they see they say wow. The wow moment is a wow moment because they were so small, now they are this large, so they are excited. There are plans to expand the crops available. Up to do garden egg, mm. up to do um, carrots mm. and um, some beans, like string beans and pigeon peas. So as, as time goes by, we get the soil in, we will expand the farm. We tend that with the we can walk in and display, show, show the, the different skill sets in, in the farm area. So it, it's we're getting along in the right direction. The venture may be small but costly. It's from the principal of the school yeah. and our inputs. You hope to get some of this to market to us? Well, the staff is going to buy from us hopefully next week. Mm -hmm. So we get another trade that we can recycle the plants and keep the farm going. Students at Palmdale Primary School are doing all they can to help reduce the country's annual food bill in excess of $600 million. Their contribution is at the school level now, but teachers are hoping that as they grow, the lesson of food security and sustainability transcends. Here's Carla Palmer. The greenhouse at Palmdale Primary School continues to be a work in progress ever since it was gifted almost a month ago. In the outdoor classroom, students have been putting theory into practice, learning about soil, watering, planting, the impact of sunlight and shade on the various fruits and vegetable seedlings, and they are loving it. This is really exciting because while being in this greenhouse, I get to learn new things about farming and I get to practice it in my own backyard too. Enjoying about inside this greenhouse is how I can grow my own crops and I can know what type of crops I'm growing and it's fun to actually plant new plants. The thing I like about the greenhouse is that I can dig up, um, dig up the soil and put baby plants into the, into the cantina, into the pot and watch them grow. It's teaching me how I can grow my own food at home and I also like how everything we see how it grows and like we just don't know it like we know that it's not fake and it's actually healthy for us. So so far we have planted romaine lettuce into flower pots and they're growing quite nicely. The children are enjoying coming in and watering them. We've also planted some cabbages. Diana Curtis is beheading Palmdale Primary's agriculture program. Apart from learning plant science, she says it's an added lifelong lesson. Learning how to save money, we're learning how to sustain ourselves, we're learning how to grow our own food, providing them with insight to the various career opportunities that they can have. They can have careers in farming, in cooking, they can become nutritionists. Principal Phyllis Johnson is adamant the students understand the message of food security 
and sustainability. There are times when we cannot get our students back into the classroom because they are just so interested. And so we want to encourage all of our community partners to recognize this opportunity for our students and supporters in this venture. School officials here at Palmdale Primary are looking to expand their agriculture program beyond this greenhouse, utilizing a portion of their open field. Today I will be talking about fasting. Our Book of Common Prayer defines fasting as a voluntary act of denying oneself food, pleasure, or legitimate needs for a certain length of time. People have been fasting since the ancient days of the Bible. Anna was an elderly widow who saw Jesus in the temple and served God with fasting and prayer. Saul encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus and Acts 9 verse 9 tells us that he was there three days without sight, neither ate or drank. The Bible records numerous accounts where people, cities, and nations have turned to God by fasting and prayer. Jesus tells us that fasting should be done in secret so that it cannot be used as a way of bringing glory to ourselves. Fasting should make us humble instead of proud. Once again, turning to our Book of Common Prayer, under the question, why do Christians fast? It essentially says that Christians fast in order to deny ourselves and to be more in tune with God's will. God's will for us to repent and to identify with those that are needy. In the end, it is not our works, but our hearts that matter to God. Getting the most out of our fast spiritually means allowing plenty time to pray. I invite you to challenge yourself this Lenten season and spend an entire day with the Lord. Good morning once again to all our viewers out there. We have now made our way to the Engerston Park. And if you're familiar with the Morning Glory show on the ZNS radio, then you must be familiar with our next guest, Sister Sharice Ferguson. Thank you so much for joining us. Certainly it is our pleasure. Good morning. And of course, welcome to the Engerston Park where we are touching the community one life at a time. Uh, so I see the volunteers uh, back there. I see a steady stream of people pouring in. Tell us more about this initiative that is going on today. Well, of course, uh, it's a radio and programming initiative. And um, I built on the idea. And I said one of the best ways that we can touch any community, any society, touch any person is with the feeding network. And so we've embarked upon that. This is our second series. The first we've been on the Edmund Moxie Park. And it was successful. And so we decided to continue in that very same vein. Well, of course, my focus is uh, building the nation's children, encouraging them, strengthening them. So many are despondent, so many are displaced, uh, so many are dysfunctional, don't know what to do, where to go. And so we thought that we would touch them in an even more personal way, uh, in every which way that we possibly can, inspiring them, encouraging them, lifting them up and reminding them that they are born to be great. So before we came on air, you were telling me about this acronym, uh, and that's really what this initiative here is about. Tell the audience about that acronym and what oh, that means. TOC, Touching Our Communities, as I indicated before. We endeavor to reach out and touch our communities in every which way possible. Uh, before the pandemic, I'm quite certain that persons have been experiencing their own personal crisis. And so we have decided... We've decided that we will continue to reach out and touch in every which way possible, uh, whatever it takes. Every home, every heart, every life, as best as we possibly can. If you do your part and if I do my part, then I believe that our nation will be a better place. So y'all look up for us. We come into All your right. neighborhood next. All right. So we're here on the Engliston Park. If you haven't already made your way here, then make your way here. That's all the time we have for now. We're going to toss it back to you guys in the studio. Hey, free breakfast, too. <laughs> So what's on your plate today, Ladon? Well, you know, this is always my favorite uh, segment, soup, soup, and so, more. So yes, the <laughs> challenge was put down, and the competition was held yesterday at Down the Earth Farm mm -hmm. on Carlpen Road. So I know you folks are waiting to see just how it looked and who won. Same soup that you're going to taste today. I did it off the farm. The thing of it is, right, <laughs> every soup I make, I buy from Sydney, buy the ground, the widgets, from Sydney 
Oh, that's why you was doing so well. <laughs> that's why you was doing so well. So just get that up. Just get that up. That's the secret. You know, that is the secret. Now I understand the secret. That's, that's one of the secrets. Uh, Let's see what we prepared for today. <laughs> yeah. I did what we call down to eat a French farm. Energizer soup. With all the different grains, the rolled wheat, dumpling. I infuse a uh, chicken with a wrap, dumpling as well, and everything that we actually do on the farm. Yeah. I did a uh, split bee soup, my mother's favorite split bee soup. No other person get fat match this. Mm -hmm. I learned this from, from the farm growing up, and as we grow up, we add in things. You want to taste my soup first? Yeah. And I'll taste you. I'll taste your soup. Okay, and I'll taste yours. Okay. Okay. Oh, it looks good. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's your chicken wrap. Oh, wow. It smells good. Well, this already looks like I did. I never heard of that. Dumpling and infused chicken. Dumpling. Something infused chicken. Yes, and shoot infused chicken. Wow. And he said that when we don't eat this, we will be energized. So I'm going to see what's going to happen. It's delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pepper. I love pepper. <laughs> It's good. It's a fresh man. Yeah, this one nice. It was a bit spicy, the first one by Sinclair. Um, the color flown was tasty, succulent. Um, I like the flavor. You can taste the flavor. And it was awesome. I liked how you put the fresh herbs and stuff in it. But I think it was too much many uh, different flavors from coming from the pepper. And it overran. And I had me saying that. And I don't like when I get that thing in my So, um, the fill-up on the Sprite, everything was, um, cooked well together, and the flavors blend very well, I guess, by this, you can say so. The um, pulp was good, but I'll give this one a, a bit of time. Listen, yeah. it was marvelous, okay? It's hard to make a decision with that. It's what you like, but I like it too, okay? So you know what that means? Yeah. That's it. These soups are very, very well put together. Very fantastic. Um, Sinclair's own is really spicy and earthy. You can feel the, the palm within the, within the soup. Whereas with Philip Owen, he put his foot, his hand. I mean, it was really good. I, I'm glad I'm not a judge. My belly full, but I'm still going to get some more. And it was a very excellent competition. In my opinion, it's a tie. This one with veggie soup. I love this one because it have a lot of grains. Because I that don't eat a lot of meat now. This one is very, very tasty. Because of the all the herbs and the grains in it. That's what I like about it. This is gonna be close, but I, I'm not a judge. <laughs> Energized. Yes. Wow. Mm. This is awesome, Mr. Sinclair. Philip. That is really my boy, Philip. Yeah. Mm. You put the two of your foot in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This is good. This yes. down. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the next door. Oh, where are you all? Um, can I eat? So we're going to let the uh, judges on the first hand do the honors. All I get to my dear. It's a tie. Yeah. We have to bring that back on again. Yes. yes. It's going to have to be another throwdown. Yeah. 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 I would add. Two different chicken ingredients. I'll accept the challenge again. Mm -hmm. One out of the day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was uh, good. I, infused chicken, I did that taste with the rice. It was, it was pretty good. Spicy, spicy. Uh, I love spicy, but it was just too spicy. That I think he had banana pepper, then he had goat pepper, cayenne pepper, and I think he had jalapeno <laughs> pepper. It was like, it's like too much pepper. So. Okay, so we're waiting on the next challenge, yeah. and some more persons want to get on board. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be what's on your plate and what's in your bowl and what's all that coming up. So I'm also yeah. going to get in that because next week I'm making a special dish with Kong Salad, so stay tuned for that. Oh, Jesus, that's another invention. Another, oh, Jesus. Another bathroom break, I should say. Okay. But anyway. But be sure to st stay tuned into the Zadness Network. For news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. 
Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 in the Bahamas tonight at 7 o'clock. I gotta go work on my Kong oh, Salad special. Are you gonna give us just a little taste of Kong Salad, with, not with grits, with some potato or some corn flakes. I'm gonna infuse a no lot of... No mayonnaise and cream. No mayonnaise, mayonnaise is too original. Oh, God. So just be rich. What's on your plate? Kong Salad next week with something. Have a great morning, everybody. <laughs> she texts me back. She says she ready, ready for some of that. Say what you talking about? You know she stopped the show. Well, let's go. I pick her up. Run and go. We head down. Well, let's go. On a coast move. We head down by Sally Sue. Ooh, ooh, oh, just me and you. What we do? Come for two. I got it on a coast move. We head down by Sally Sue. Ooh, ooh, oh. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Let's Chat with Tanya Lightborn. I'm so happy to have join us my guest, Ellen. And I'm going to pronounce her name correctly. Her surname, <laughs> Cepeda. Cepeda, yeah. yes. Cepeda, oh my yes. goodness, okay. Cepeda. Ellen is joining us. She's a 